Hey guys, this week I swapped out the brakes on my Varla Eagle One. The original mechanical brakes were giving me a ton of trouble and got to the point that they refused to function normally for more than one ride. Upon hearing my trouble, Varla sent me a new pair of hydraulic brakes, so I got to do a swap and I recorded my process. This is not intended to be an in-depth tutorial, but I will show you my process and you can use this as you will. I've long been asking scooter companies to make hydraulic brakes the standard on scooters that hit 30 plus miles an hour. And I will finally get a chance to try them out on a high speed scooter to see what difference they make. Seeing as the weather here in Utah is snowy or rainy almost every day, I haven't gotten a chance to take the upgraded Eagle one out for a spin, so I will plan on putting my thoughts on mechanical versus hydraulic brakes in another video. The brakes they sent to me are the brand Zoom, well known in the electric scooter community but not exactly name brand but I will reserve judgment on the performance for a later date. The nice part about these brakes is that they were designed for electric scooters, so they include the electric line to activate the rear brake lights. If you are doing a swap for SRAM, Shimano, or another brake brand that doesn't have this electric line, you'll be fine without the brake lights, as I honestly doubt they are too necessary if you're always using the bike lane or sidewalk. The kit they sent me includes the calipers with the hydraulic line already connected, a set of levers, the required connectors to attach the brake line to the levers, and some zip ties to tidy up the brake lines. Here was my process for the brake swap. First, I started by pulling off the handlebar grips and loosening the brake lever clamps to make things easier to work with when disconnecting the brake lines. I then snipped all the zip ties, keeping the brake and electric lines tidy. I'll replace these zip ties at the end. Now down to undo the clamp on the brake caliper that holds the brake wire. After pulling out the wire, I pulled the brake line back through the body of the scooter. I then unbolted the old calipers, leaving the original mounting bracket, and then proceeded to install the new hydraulic calipers. The brake lines are already connected to the calipers, so that makes the installation process much easier. I then fend the new brake lines through the scooter and up to the handlebars. After pulling off the old levers and throwing on the new ones, I connected the brake lines to the new levers. Connecting the brake lines requires this little metal olive and threaded hose nut which gets screwed in with an 8mm spanner or an adjustable wrench if you don't have a spanner that small, like me. The olive and bolt get slid onto the brake line after taking this cap off the line and before inserting the line into the lever. The metal stopper in the brake lever needs to be unscrewed and the new nut gets threaded in its place. This compression nut will smash the olive as it gets screwed in to ensure no leaks occur. Be sure not to activate the brake lever before the hose is properly installed or you get brake fluid leaks. After connecting the hydraulic brake lines, I had to decide how I wanted to go about connecting the electronic lines so the brake lights would activate properly. I'm not an electrician and I have very little knowledge of how the inside of these scooters are wired, so I decided that I would try splicing the old and new brake wires together. Before cutting the new wire down to a short size in case this didn't work, I did a test splice and as you can see it worked beautifully. For the final splice, I decided to use these terminal wire connectors and some electrical tape. The wire connectors were probably unnecessary and they ended up being quite bulky but I wanted to make sure that the connection was sound and that the wire stayed connected and didn't get joggled loose while riding. This process was quite simple. You strip the wire, connect white to white and black to black using the connectors, then crimp the connectors a few times and wrap it all in electrical tape.
After a test, everything was working properly, so I slid the handlebar grips back on to set up the cockpit properly again. I then wrapped all the wires up as neatly as I could and reattached the zip ties. This is not the ideal situation, but I'm sure that having the hydraulic brakes will help me get over having a bit of tape on the front wires. And that's the basic process I used to upgrade my mechanical brakes to hydraulic brakes. There will be a few more adjustments to make once I get the scooter out on the street, and ideally I should do a brake bleed before riding to make sure the brakes are functioning at 100%. For those who do not know, bleeding your brakes is the process of removing air from the line of hydraulic brakes. If there's air in the lines, the lever take more effort and travel to activate the brake, and if there's too much air in the lines, it can get quite dangerous and will require several pumps of the brake levers to activate the brakes. So regular brake bleeding is important. As far as the Eagle One goes, I'm writing the script for the full review right now. I want to use the scooter for a bit with the hydraulic brakes, and I will factor this into the review as I'm pretty sure that Varla is shipping the new Eagle One scooters with these exact hydraulic brakes. Content has been a little slow in January and February because of the weather, but I have lots of stuff planned for this year as soon as it gets warm again, so be sure to get subscribed, and if this video was useful or entertaining, hit the like button. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.